Hello everybody, Claudio Hitte here, welcome back to Accidental Science. Today we will see how to transform this rusty hammer into something like this. In particular, in this video we will see how to distinguish the various kinds of rust, how to remove and convert uh, the rust, and how to protect the metal with an innovative revisitation of an answered recipe. So stick with me to see all these things in this video. These pieces seem to be uh, rusted more or less the same way, uh, but uh, there are subtle differences between uh, each one of them. For example, this hydraulic pipe um, has uh, this yellow patina and it is mostly made of uh, iron 3 oxide and uh, it is not rust it is an ox uh, metal oxide is uh, iron oxide um, and it is easier to convert but here we can see uh, here it is already uh, converting into rust uh, while here we have uh, we still have this uh, oxide this iron oxide we can see this uh, uh, because it is a little bit uh, more porous this is hydrogen oxide and um, and differs from this one which is just uh, the, the the iron oxide and um, this old pipe is even uh, better visible uh, and in the, it uh, sports uh, a lot of flakes that uh, are easily removed just with a nail. And this other uh, sports another kind of rust. It is uh, made mainly of uh, iron three oxide, which is not yet uh, a true and partially hydroxide. So rust and iron oxide. Why this black uh, color is uh, iron 2,3 oxide. Finally, we have this and the hammer that I have to con convert to have to recover today. It sports uh, iron 3 oxides, uh, a kind of a little bit of rust, and uh, and mostly we see uh, it's still black. Uh, so it mostly still has uh, iron 2,3 uh, oxide. There is a common misconception that rust carries tetanus, but it, it is not true. Uh, tetanus is a, a bacteria that can be found everywhere and it is widespread all over the world. It can be found in manure, in uh, dust, uh, dirt, uh, and even in saliva of cats, dogs, uh, and even in humans. <laughs> and while rust being porous uh, allows the uh, accumulation of this bacteria, it can be found even in uh, non-rusted nails. If a nail, for example, a nail uh, punctures your skin and uh, carries the, the bacteria of which is contaminated into your skin, uh, then there, because this, below the skin there is an anaerobic uh, uh, environment, uh, this bacteria that, that thrive in the anaerobic environments uh, will replicate uh, and we will make you sick. Uh, so it is better to have almost three doses of uh, vaccine against this bacteria and have a boost or every five to not more than ten years because there is a lot of chance to uh, be infected uh, with this uh, bacteria because it is really everywhere. Bottom line, rust or iron 3 hydroxide don't make you sick uh, of tetanus. The part to be treated must be thoroughly cleaned from grime and I've used a degreaser and hot water to do this job. The method we will see soon is not that effective with the rust that is uh, in flakes uh, that detach from the, the, the object. And in that case, it, you, you have to use some mechanical means to remove uh, the flakes. But if you have a, a, an object that is not uh, in that conditions and, uh, you, and you don't want to use mechanical means because it would spoil the object itself. Uh, in that case, this method could be really useful. But because this method involves the use of acids, you have to protect your hands because 
this acid uh, could uh, irritate your skin and wear septic goggles because a little splash of acid in your eyes will cause permanent damage. For this process we are gonna use the acidic, acidic acid and um, this time I would like to experiment uh, with uh, the higher concentration at 80% uh, just to see how fast it works. <laughs> of acid inside this vessel. This acid have a strong smell. We we'll have to work in a ventilated area far from things that could be uh, attacked by the, 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 the fumes uh, of, the, of the acid. And because here is not that warm, <laughs> uh, there are six degrees Celsius and um, uh, to speed up a little bit the reaction I think to uh, warm up a little bit uh, the subject uh, not too hot but uh, almost around uh, to 30 to 40 degrees Celsius. Let's put this in the AC. As you can see there is an immediate reaction, uh, rust start to dissolve into the acid. So the rust, to remove the rust, since the rust is uh, an oxidation of uh, iron, we have ferric of ferrous oxide, and this is oxygen, oxygen with iron, uh, or ferric oxide, hydroxide, uh, which is oxygen with iron, oxygen and hydrogen. Uh, we have to get rid of this oxygen, or in other words, uh, we need to reduce the oxidation state or the oxygen to the the the, the iron uh, so let's say we have to set free the iron and uh, and let the oxygen go away in some way and so the process that do this operation is called reduction uh, so uh, in the in the in a reduction process we have an oxidizing agent uh, for example in this case uh, an uh, oc uh, iron oxide a uh, ferrous oxide so like this that undergoes reduction uh, of its oxidation state gaining one electron and uh, this electron is picked from a reducing agent that undergoes oxidation it becomes oxidated and lose this electron so the the oxygen uh, becomes an ion and it is free to go somewhere and binding with a component uh, a part of the compound of the reducing agent and typical uh, and typical reducing agents are acids uh, um, for example effective with this is citric acid which is uh, uh, obtained from the rind of uh, lemons, for example, <laughs> hydrochloric acid and acetic acid, which is the, the, the kind of acid that I use today. Acetic acid is uh, a weak acid, is not that aggressive, uh, it won't attack the iron itself uh, as the hydrochloric acid, which is a strong acid, would do. And there is the resulting, the result is relatively harmful compound and while in this case I've used uh, acetic acid at 80% of concentration you can use uh, even lower concentration for example this hammer what which was uh, really really rusted uh, was cleaned up with uh, was um, cleaned up from the rust uh, with uh, acetic acid at 20% of concentration just um, letting sit uh, this uh, piece of metal into the bath for uh, just uh, a little bit more than 24, 24 hours with a temperature of uh, more than 25 degrees Celsius as you can see it went really really well so I hope that even this 
uh, experiment with 80% of acidic acid will result in a good we give we give a good result okay uh, it's been about uh, four hours uh, and the bath uh, uh, become this uh, brown color uh, seems to be quite clean let's check it out and see how it went you can pick up this uh, with hands and yeah uh, it is uh, almost cleaned up uh, everywhere it is a gray color that we can uh, Maybe it has been attacked a little bit too much than the expected. Uh, yeah, look, it is really clean. Uh, it's uh, sufficient to clean up uh, the part with the hands, like that, like so. As you can see, it is remained to the gloves, uh, this metallic uh, shade, and that is uh, actually iron. <laughs> Particles of iron. Beautiful. Look, my glove is covered uh, with uh, this uh, patina of iron. <laughs> the glove is metalized. Awesome. <laughs> and this is how it went after a good cleaning uh, with uh, a paste and uh, cleaning paste and a toothbrush uh, and I think 80% uh, of acidic acid is too much uh, better 20% 25% uh, maybe even 30% uh, for longer uh, time but 80% um, is a little bit too much And this is how it went after cleansing and polishing with the iron wool. Because the metal now is really very clean, being in contact with the oxygen in the air will cause oxidation quite quickly, so we need to product it in some way. An old recipe is to cover the metal with linseed oil diluted in turpentine, let it dry for a day or two, and then cook it with a flame making it brown or to black. However, since it is the very oxygen in the air that causes polymerization of the linseed oil, I had the idea to try to accelerate the process by heating the coated object with a heat gun. The heat gun not only provides the heat required for hardening the oil, but also conveys a much larger amount of air, thus oxygen, that should accelerate the process of polymerization and hardening. Let's give it a try. Okay, it took a while, but it is sl slowly turning uh, to a uh, yellow color, pale yellow color, a champagne <laughs> color. Uh, before testing um, the cooling toughness, uh, I have to, to wait. Uh, it, cool down, so it cools down. And the final result uh, is uh, pretty nice. And uh, this really tough. Uh, it, the polymerization here uh, took just uh, five minutes. <laughs> Not much. I think this is a success uh, and uh, a very and a very interesting result because using the heat gun uh, has accelerated uh, noticeably the 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 polymerization. And uh, and the actual hardening of the of the of the coating. A further heating at uh, 250 degrees Celsius for two to three hours would turn the coating into a dark brown black color and uh, a further hardening. What to do with the spent liquor? If the acid is completely spent and saturated with ferric oxide, so it could be used as mordant. This bath is not spent at all, but 
to give you just an idea, it is able to provide a light, transparent color when applied to the wood. Unspent acid can be still used to treat other parts and it can be even used to remove the zinc coating as in these two washers. Finally, if the acid is not fully spent, you can use it as with killer. Um, just be sure not to exceed a concentration of 20%. The contaminant is just iron acetate or even zinc acetate if you etch or remove zinc and acetic acid is not harmful for the environment. Hope you enjoyed this video, if so a big thumb up and uh, of course uh, share and uh, subscribe uh, and share with your friends uh, or in red reddit facebook uh, everywhere and as always leave your comments in the section down below for now that's all folks uh, thanks for watching see you next time bye